Okay, our next spark is titled, What We Can Learn from Old Wives' Tales by Raymond Chard. Raymond is a teacher, a fiance, a power lifter, a business owner. He is trying to make chemistry suck less for students across the nation. He can also, PV equals NRT, see, I know chemistry. He can also solve a Rubik's Cube in 17 seconds, and maybe after this I'm going to make him prove that. But let's hear his talk. No Rubik's Cube. My name is Raymond Chard, and I'm a business owner. I'm in business with my beautiful fiance, and here's our office. It's in the bedroom. And I've come to learn if she says, clean the office, she really means clean the bedroom. But I've been in business for a couple of years now, and I've had the tremendous opportunity to meet a bunch of incredible people. Here I am with CSU Business Ventures last year. I've had a chance to meet tons of business mentors, and of course, I've heard tons of business advice. First one, of course, you always want to give a f good, firm handshake. Stick out your arm, make eye contact, give a firm handshake, and of course, if you're wearing a name tag, you want to wear it over your right chest, so when they're shaking your hands, they can see your name immediately. Oh, you've probably heard this next one. Oh yeah, you gotta fake it till you make it. I don't know how many times I've left the comfort of my office. Shorts, tank top, switched into slacks and a polo, went to a business meeting so it looked like I came from a real office and was doing official business. Here's my favorite. You gotta pay the cost to be the boss. If you're gonna be in business, you need to know that there's a lot of costs associated with it, and a lot of them aren't monetary. Time, stress, emotion, sleep, all of those emotions have to go into being the boss. Now, although these are all tweet-worthy, the most important piece of business advice I ever received actually came in the form of an old wives' tale in an educational setting, and it was one of them stories passed on from generation to generation. And the story kind of sets itself up a little something like this. There's a little boy who is represented by my stick figure here. And this little boy is walking along a beautiful beach. And my mind goes to La Jolla Shores in San Diego. And the waves are crashing into the beach. And it's beautiful white sand. And he's walking along his journey, enjoying his day. And a leprechaun pops out of nowhere. And the leprechaun looks at this boy and says these very, very important words. The leprechaun says, pick up some sand and put it in your pocket, for tomorrow you will be happy and you will be sad. The boy, kind of startled by the leprechaun initially, remembers the words of the leprechaun. The leprechaun said some wise words to the boy, and the boy remembers. The leprechaun said, pick up some sand and put it in your pocket, for tomorrow you will be happy and you will be sad. Now, he doesn't act on the words of the leprechaun, and continues on his walk. The sun's starting to set. His night's kind of coming to a close. And just after he stepped, just about as he steps off the beach, he remembers the words of the leprechaun. And the leprechaun said, pick up some sand and put it in your pocket, for tomorrow you will help me out, be happy, and you will be. So the boy reaches down, says, what the heck, I'm going to grab a handful of sand, and I'm going to put it in my pocket. Goes home wakes up the next morning. And when he wakes up the next morning, all he can think about are the words of the leprechaun. And the leprechaun said to the boy, pick up some sand and put it in your pocket, for tomorrow you will be And you will be So the little boy runs over to the shorts that he was wearing the day before, reaches his hand into his pocket. And what he comes to find is that there's no longer sand there. There are diamonds. He pulls out a handful of diamonds. Now you think to yourself to what the leprechaun said. Why was the boy happy? Well, there's a very beautiful girl in this audience. I see her back up there who I once bought a diamond ring for. And I tell you what, I know how a diamond can make somebody pretty happy. So, so of course, the obvious here is the boy is very happy because he has diamonds. Now, the moral of the story, the reason why I'm here, the harder part of the story for you to think about is why was the boy sad? Now, the first, second, third time I heard this story wasn't very obvious to me. Why would he be sad? <laughs> That's right. He didn't pick up more sand. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are walking through the sandbox of life. 
The sand is meant to be a metaphor for your job, your relationships, your education, your business. Are you just walking through life or are you picking up the sand as you walk through life? Are you making the most of every opportunity? Are you learning at any moment's notice? Are you taking those risks? Are you reaching out to those people? Are you picking up the sand? Because you never know when that sand will turn into diamonds. My name is Raymond Chard. I'm with Chemistry with Ray. And I'd like to thank you guys. I would remind you guys to pick up the sand as you walk through life. And peace, love, and chemistry. Have a great day.